Juan Gonzalez. And welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. The whistleblowing group WikiLeaks plans to release the largest cache of classified U.S. documents in history tomorrow. The group is expected to post up to 400,000 intelligence reports on the Iraq war. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange is holding a press conference in London on Saturday morning to, mark the, to make the announcement. The disclosure of the documents would comprise the biggest leak in U.S. history, far more than the 91,000 Afghanistan war logs WikiLeaks released this summer. The U.S. government is racing to prepare for the fallout. A team of more than 100 analysts from the Defense Intelligence Agency have been combing through classified Iraq documents they think will be released. WikiLeaks, <clears throat> WikiLeaks sparked condemnation from the U.S. government when it released the 91,000 Afghan war logs in July. The White House and the Pentagon accused the website of irresponsibility. They claimed they were putting people's lives in danger. But the Associated Press recently obtained a Pentagon letter reporting that no U.S. intelligence sources or practices were compromised by the leak. Nevertheless, WikiLeaks says it's been targeted by the U.S. government. In the aftermath of the Afghan war logs leak, the U.S. reportedly asked Britain, Germany, Australia, and other Western governments to open criminal investigations into Julian Assange and severely restrict his international travel. Most recently, WikiLeaks accused the U.S. of targeting it with financial warfare. Last week, Julian Assange said the company responsible for collecting the WikiLeaks donations terminated its account after the U.S. and Australia placed the group on blacklists. Meanwhile, Army intelligence analyst Bradley Manning has been in prison since May when he was arrested on charges of leaking a video of a U.S. military helicopter killing a group of innocent Iraqis in Baghdad. For more, we're joined here in our New York studio by Daniel Ellsberg, perhaps the country's most famous whistleblower. He leaked the secret history of the Vietnam War in 1971. He's flying to London tonight. He'll take, place, uh, he'll take part in the WikiLeaks News Conference on Saturday. Dan Ellsberg, welcome to Democracy Now! Can you talk about this 400,000 pages or documents that are expected to be released? 400,000 documents. Allegedly, it is, uh, of course, a leak on a scale that I couldn't have done uh, 40 years ago without uh, scanners and uh, digital capability. I used the most advanced technology at that time, Xerox, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't have done what I did uh, 10 years before that. You used Xerox 7,000 pages? <clears throat> yes, it took a long time, one page at a time. So I'm quite jealous of the, the current capabilities, but I'm glad to express my support of what WikiLeaks is doing and its sources in particular. Whoever gave these, uh, this information to WikiLeaks obviously understood that they were at risk of being where Bradley Manning is now, accused, in prison. We don't know, I don't know who the source was. And uh, if Bradley Manning is shown uh, by Army beyond a reasonable doubt to have been the source, he'll have my admiration and thanks for doing that. I've faced that kind of risk myself 40 years ago and it always seemed uh, worthwhile to me to uh, be willing to risk one's life in prison even to help shorten a war like Afghanistan or Iraq. That's what we were suffering uh, then in Vietnam. And it was really the secrecy, the secrecy, the wrongful secrecy of information like this that got us into Vietnam and Afghanistan and Iraq or has kept the war going in Afghanistan. So if there's any chance of shortening that, it's certainly worth a person's life. And the extent of damage control that the, uh, the military is apparently uh, in the mode that it's in uh, in uh, preparation for the release of this of these well, uh, documents does it surprise they, you? They though? think they know what's coming out. They're crying alarm over this, as they always do in the case of every case of a leak. Certainly, they did with the Pentagon Papers. In fact, in that case. Uh, they said that the damage to national security was so great that they had to stop the presses for the first time in our history. That the Supreme Court ruled otherwise, having heard testimony on that. And the 17, in fact, 19 newspapers altogether decided otherwise and uh, did print the papers in what amounted to civil disobedience against the warnings of the Attorney General. In no case was there any harm discovered in that case. And as for the releases in July, uh, with all the warnings we heard passed on by the media quite uncritically, uh, no damage has been uh, has been reported. So I, I think that one should take their warnings now with a, a lot of salt. Well, at a Pentagon news conference in August, Defense Secretary Robert Gates denounced the leaking of the Afghan war logs. The battlefield consequences of the release of these documents 
are potentially severe and dangerous for our troops, our allies, and Afghan partners, and may well damage our relationships and reputation in that key part of the world. Intelligence sources and methods, as well as military tactics, techniques, and procedures will become known to our adversaries. This department is conducting a thorough, aggressive investigation to determine how this leak occurred, to identify the person or persons responsible, and to assess the content of the information compromised. Speaking at the same news conference, Admiral Mike Mullen, the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, accused WikiLeaks of having blood on its hands. Mr. Assange can say whatever he likes about the greater good he thinks he and his source are doing. But the truth is, they might already have on their hands the blood of some young soldier or that of an Afghan family. Disagree with the war all you want. Take issue with the policy. Challenge me or our ground commanders on the decisions we make to accomplish the mission we've been given. But don't put those who willingly go into harm's way even further in harm's way just to satisfy your need to make a point. And yet the Associated Press obtained this Pentagon letter reporting no U.S. intelligence sources or practices were compromised by the leaks. Dan Ellsberg. You know, for all that the Admiral Mullen, or for that matter, Presidents Bush or Barack Obama, tell us of the good that they hope to accomplish, we haven't seen any evidence of that, I would say. And in terms of blood on their hands, I'm sorry to say a lot of actual blood has been spilled, as opposed to this hypothetical possible blood, of which none has been reported from the WikiLeaks. Actually, the demands they're making of the press to stay away from this story, or even readers, not to read it, and they're talking about returning the material. Uh, seems absurd on its face. Uh, returning released material released into cyberspace uh, seems rather absurd. They're obviously threatening prosecution because they're using the words of the charges that were first used against me, the Espionage Act, which was not intended as an official secrets act, but it uses language like returning the information, uh, 18 U.S.C. 793 D&E. I was the first person to uh, have the experience of having those charges uh, made. In this case, they have some credibility of prosecution because President Barack Obama has already brought as many prosecutions for leaks to the American public as all previous presidents put together. It's a small number, it's three, but since he didn't have a really law intended to do that, uh, no other president has brought one pro more than one prosecution. He's brought three, and clearly what he's threatening here with the press, including you and even your readers, for not returning the information that they're not authorized to receive, uh, is, a clear, uh, is a clear warning, I'd say, of prosecution, which means that I think this administration is moving toward really aggressively using the Espionage Act as an official secrets act, in which case we'll know even less than we do about the lies that prolong wars and get us into wrongful wars. But what about that policy, given the fact that President Obama came into office talking about a more transparent uh, and open government and, uh, and, and appears to be going in, in the opposite direction? Well, that promise has gone the way of his promise to close Guantanamo and a number of other, other promises. This, uh, in no way in, in the general defense and homeland security area is he less opaque, more transparent than Bush, and as I say, he's been even more aggressive in pursuing prosecution. One other aspect of that is that my um, understanding is that uh, the, the impression he's giving that he's ending the war in Iraq, or that it has ended even, uh, the war described by these 400,000 documents, uh, is I think a conscious lie. I think it's as much of a lie as Lyndon Johnson's when I was working for him and he underestimated for the public the scale and the duration of the war we were getting into. I'll predict, without having seen these documents, I will make a bet here, I'll stick my neck out, that there's no hint in those 400,000 documents which go up into this year that President Obama, Barack Obama intends to remove our bases from Iraq next year or the year after or any time in his term. I'll bet there isn't even a contingency plan for turning over those bases to Iraqis. And that means that rather than doing what he's promised, which is to get all American troops out by the end of next year, I think there'll be tens of thousands there whenever he leaves office, whether it's uh, in 2013 or, or four years after that.
Well, we should say you were a high level. You were a high level Pentagon official working for the Rand Corporation. That's right. I was. I spent years keeping. Uh, I was, worked for the Pentagon and the State Department. I spent years keeping my mouth shut as presidents lied to us and kept these secrets. I shouldn't have done that, and that's why I admire someone uh, even who's accused, like Bradley Manning, if he is the source or whoever the source was, of actually risking their own personal freedom in order to tell the truth. I think they're being better citizens and showing their patriot patriotism in a better way than when they keep their mouths shut. Dan Ellsberg, can you go back to the language of 793, the law that goes after whistleblowers and how yes. it can go after journalists <clears throat> as well? The, uh, it actually can apply. The, the words are so broad because they really were intended for espionage, for people who are secretly giving information to, to an enemy. So they weren't designed to uh, protect, let's say, the First Amendment or freedoms.